Okay. All right. All right. But I'm sure subverse update out there. Let's take a look to see what we got for a subverse update. You know what I'm talking about? That release date should be out by now. Let's see what we got. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your man of fire himself, Half Pint, once again. Or do be your man of fire, it do be your man of fire. Today, let's talk about that subverse delay. And if I'm being entirely honest, it's not completely unnecessary or out of the blue. It was quite some time before we got some sort of information pertaining specifically to when subverse was going to get a release date at all. Um, the December update was towards the end of the month, so I was expecting the January update to follow suit to make sure they had a positive date when the game was going to come out. However, we got no information pertaining to specifically when we're going to be getting the release date for Subverse, even though, as I'm recording this, it's the last day of January. We got a post from Kristoff talking about how they decided to go ahead and postpone the, uh, I think, the announced release date due to COVID concerns. I don't know if the actual release date will be delayed as well. We'll have to wait, but that's why I'm here. What we're going to do what I do best. Today we're going to be talking about all the different scenarios and uh, specifically what should happen with Subverse if worst case scenario happens or even best case scenario. Let's take a look specifically when we might be getting a release date for Subverse. Before we get too far in the video, be sure to hit subscribe down below because you guys know how inconsistent my upload rate is, so that way you guys can be notified whenever I do upload. I also do a lot of live streams. It'd be kind of cool if you guys stopped by. I'm just saying, man, every Tuesday and Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time Zone, come create your character in XCOM, and we'll do it subverse style. There's a couple different things that we should talk about specifically. First of all, I've been gone for a while. Why is that? Um, I have had like four different subverse recordings. None of them came out because none of them fit the quality standard that I wanted. That I'm just really paranoid. When script writing and just talking off the cuff, none of it worked, so I thought, best way would be talking to the webcam again and see if this will actually get a video out. But that being said, let's talk specifically more about what we could expect for Subverse. So let's say, for example, that the game is still releasing quarter one. So why specifically have we not heard a release date just yet? A couple reasons. A, we're right off the heels of Cyberpunk and we all know how the launch of that game specifically went. Yeah, I'd rather wait for the game to be fully working as intended. Even if it's just the first chapter of the game, have it at least fully working as intended before releasing that. The less bugs, the better, am I right? But I think the bigger problem is not just how polished the game is, but also, specifically, um, Mass Effect was also announced to be coming out around quarter one of this year. And we have no release date for that game either. So I can imagine the studio fellows kind of on edge like, when should we release this game? When when should this game come out? Why we we don't wait when what how wait where where's all the other game? This ain't hold on wait wait a minute. We don't really know until we hear something about Mass Effect. That that's kind of the game that that's sort of the genre they're inside of. So they don't really want to rival that. On top of that, that game probably inspired this one as well. I mean they're kind of going up the game that inspired them on its second release. That's not really something they want to be rivaling. There's a couple of different ideas they could do here. If, God forbid, the leaks are correct about the Mass Effect release, and I think early March, I believe, it's like March 12th is when the release date was, or was it March 21st? Okay, so March 12th is the alleged leaked release date. Um, this game has been leaked horribly for well over a year now, and all of those leaks have been right for the most part. So I, I almost believe this leak, but of course we, we can't, we have to take all these with a grain of salt. So let's say that the game does come out March 12th, right? The idea would be either if they did officially announce a release date, piggyback off the success or off of the hype of Mass Effect. That'd be a good opportunity for them to put their name out there and get well known. Or I'd say the better case scenario, wait for Mass Effect to come out, and as people get on that high of playing Mass Effect again and getting about a month of their playthrough or so, 
wait until the end of March and then release Subverse. People are like just getting off the high of Mass Effect once more, but continue the momentum of a similar game. That'd be one of the best case scenarios for them to really make sure they have enough um, outsiders to know that Subverse exists to give it a look. And that's saying if the game is ready. Let's say the game is actually being postponed, not just because it's release date, but COVID has actually postponed the game itself as well, and they need a later release date. Let's say they have to get pushed into the second quarter. My eye, my eye, my eye. That's not necessarily worst case scenario either. In fact, that can also be used to their advantage. I'm sure we all know about the hot, dry rut that comes to the releases of games inside the summer. It's dry, dull, nothing ever happens in the summer. Whenever an indie game usually comes out around that time, it tends to blow up in popularity or a lot of people talking about it. That's the sort of stuff that we want and Subverse could really be working based off of because not much talk on a specific game, you are the game to talk about. And that did sort of happen for Subverse around April, I believe. Their Kickstarter came out in March, but April is when I made a video on it when other YouTubers were making videos talking about the Kickstarter. So, I mean, that's not a bad idea either if it's still within the order. There are these little dry periods of when there are no games coming out, it'd be the best time for them to advertise Subverse. So, delay or not, this could be used to their advantage, and they're probably holding off because Mass Effect is not a game they want to be going up against. But on top of that, we should talk about how they should also maintain the longevity of the game, because remember, this first release date is for the first chapter of the game. This isn't for the entire game. So if it's the first chapter, how do we create a sort of momentum to keep going for the game? Well, there's a couple ideas that I have particularly. One of the main ideas I have is easy, easy. Before the second chapter comes out for the game, when you're doing your advertising or whatever they have, I'm sure they're going to have plenty of uh, social talks and all that good stuff. Before the second chapter comes out, I'm telling you, utilize that Steam feature where you can make your game free to play like for like a weekend right for like a couple of days it's free to play but do it like right before the second chapter comes out so you've had this entire period of time where you can play and people purchased the first chapter and purchases are down right but you also have the short period when the hype's getting back up you can have people play the first chapter for free for a couple of days right before the second chapter comes out. But when the day of the second chapter releases, make sure you have to pay for the game again. It's when the free trial ends, so people buy Subverse by both chapters. Hmm, see? Easy advertisement. And you get the free weekend, it goes around Steam. Okay, well, let's say that um, we still need the advertisement for the game. What we do specifically. There's a couple ideas here. For one, social media. Um, if you have the tweets that make the internet talk about it that's what you want to be doing not just pure advertisement sometimes you gotta get your name out there and no you don't have to be as cringy as wendy's when it comes to their tweeting and how they do but it's not a bad idea to have the sort of random ass tweets not just pertain to your game but to make sure that you can have some sort of flow of advertisement come in and people hear about you and people talk about you uh, word of mouth is probably the most powerful tool you can but okay, social media, I'm sure they already know about that sort of stuff. They have a plan for that specifically. The other thing I would say you guys need to do, let's say, God forbid, you guys do some patches to retain people to- But they could do these smaller patches, not on the dev diary, but not everyone reads, but put it onto a forum that everyone is more likely to read, where you're gonna get your everyday sort of person, in case they don't watch content creators like me. They could see patch notes on like their Twitter, for example, or Reddit. If you guys haven't made a Reddit, make a subverse Reddit. That needs to happen, because although Discord is a great place, and that's where most people are at, again, go to the Discord if you haven't already, great place, you can talk to the people, amazing people there. Reddit is more of the everyday sort of person, uh, person's platform. That's where you're going to get a majority of those regulars that you're probably going to be looking for. And I think Reddit might be a little bit more powerful when it comes to that sort of advertisement. Also, it wouldn't be a bad idea to really make sure people can find your social media platforms once they're inside of the game. Okay, so we talked about social media, a lot of the norms when it comes to advertising. So a lot of these are the basics when it comes to 
uh, marketing and advertising fundamentals. So I'm sure they already know about this sort of stuff. They have some professionals working on their team. The big thing that they, I, they probably considered, but they might not know just how powerful it is. And it is a community fostered community. Okay. When you have this community, and that word's already competitive, when they take care of themselves, again, word of mouth, that is really one of the best ways to keep a game's longevity going and having people get excited for the next one. They advertise it for you. Again, you could use Reddit for that example, but what about the game itself? Could we do that within the game? Yes, it's something I've talked about quite a bit. I'm going to continue to talk about it to make sure that they do it, because they need to do it. The thing specifically they need is a mode that has the community foster itself to a point, um, having people talk to others. The biggest example I like to bring up all the time is Halo. Halo 3 and Halo Reach back in those heydays because they, they weren't just heydays at this point. There's a reason why it's still successful to the state with the Master Chief Collection. So sure, they have the amazing campaign and the great PvP and matchmaking and all that sort of stuff, right? Well, if it was just that stuff, that game would have died when it lost its population and that was it. It was just known for those. But there was more with it. They had the file share system where you could save clips and pictures thanks to the theater system that they had we look at your clips on top of that they had the most important feature custom games and forge they could create levels and on top of that they could also create their own game modes the community would uh not only would you go into a match and find some people you found a really cool person on the mic you'd bring them with you to go for a custom game they started communities and relationships that way and that way they would start growing the community itself that was one of the best ways to do that it wasn't just Bungie's constant advertising because sure, although some people were on the website for Bungie, not everyone was. The majority of people weren't actually. And that was one of the best ways to do it was with custom games. Uh, these community-based modes. I need a synonym for that word. But it's not just creating custom content. There are other ways of doing it too. Zombies for Call of Duty has done it as well. Black Ops is really well known for its zombies community. Now, granted, they have their craziest Easter eggs to have people talking about all the time. That's kind of formulated. That's a smart way of doing it. You know, building this um, this particular mode where people in the community have to work together to find out specifically what's on there. It's not just directly told by the devs. That's also what Destiny's been doing well. But it's not just the custom content within there as well. It's the memories. The replay value is the biggest one. And that's really what I feel when it comes to all these modes. Custom games, Forge, Zombies, or really any other game mode that has a lot of replay value to it. And that's why I bring this to Subverse. Because with the Subverse betas, we've had specifically this Endless mode, which is cool for testing all those purposes. But I feel like this could be used for the game, and not in just its simple mode. That's a wasted opportunity. I'm telling you, they could use this Endless mode, whether it's just one of the chapters that gets released or if it's in the final product release an endless based mode and you can add replay value by allowing the player to make different decisions I'm not talking about just choosing a different waifu having that be the only way they can change it and then going and versing the factions no hell maybe if you even made one of the endless modes to the fact where you had to acquire the waifus every single time you boot up the endless mode and then you could like swap between them like every five rounds that sort of stuff have like that little space station we did for like a defense mode that one time put that in there and you go up to it and that's where you make purchases to make your ship harder faster stronger harder it would give you different decisions every time you played this mode have people work together uh, have custom game modes inside of Halo. You could change some of the characteristics of like the ship, you know, how fast does it shoot? How much damage does it take? How much health does it have when starting an endless mode? How many enemies do you want to fight? How many different factions do you want to go up against? You now, you can decide specifically how you want to tailor your performance and advertise it on Reddit. And that's just an idea. They can have different ideas of what they want to do. But I feel like a community-based mode is also going to help keep the advertisement and longevity and momentum for the game between all these different chapter-based releases. Because I'm sure they want to make sure they keep this longevity going. So, let's quickly touch upon everything we've talked about today. The delay of the game could be for the first quarter or into the second quarter. And I believe number one priority is for them to make sure that the game is polished as possible so if we go second quarter or third quarter then so be it that's what we go for if it's coming out in the first quarter wait for mass effect and be sure to piggyback off of its success 
it's coming out second quarter you have those dry periods in the summer where people are ripe and waiting for opportunities to talk about a different game because there's not usually big releases in the summer use that to your opportunity to release your game and have people talking about it on top of this make sure you utilize social media to the best that you can to advertise the game in more lesser known ways that a lot of different gaming companies don't. If you do weekly patches, for example, make sure that it's not just in your dev diary or that all updates are in your dev diary, but make sure it's also on your social media obtainable for your everyday person to see. You know, like when they're coming back from work, they wanna, they start browsing through their phone because they're bored at work and they use Twitter or Reddit, whatever they usually use. They can find Subverse. On top of this, make sure that you have a Reddit for Subverse because that's where a lot of people are going to, although the Discord server is really popular, if you're looking for your everyday sort of person to be purchasing this game as well, make sure you also have a, um, a Reddit for these people to go on to. And most importantly, if you want some extra advertisement, have some free play days before the second chapter comes out to really boost the amount of people playing the game and the interest before the second chapter comes out and make sure they might want to have the opportunity to buy that second chapter. And lastly, make sure there is a community-based mode. Highly important. I don't know if you guys quit for one of these chapters or by the end of the game. Just make sure you do it. I feel like it's probably one of the most important things you guys could do for Subverse. Because granted, story's killer as it is. That's your guys' main focus. That's great and all. But if Studio Foe... I feel like Studio Foe is doing more than just building the game. They're building Studio Foe as a company. I'm kind of excited to see what comes out after Subverse as well. So, um, fingers crossed, they do build a community uh, for their studio specifically. So, you guys, if you have any ideas, let me know down below. I want to hear what you guys all have to say in this topic. If you have any better ideas specifically how they should maintain the longevity of the game, or possibly when the game is coming out. When do you think the game is coming out? Be sure to let me know down below. If you made it through this chunky boy video, leave a hashtag finished as well. And, uh... I don't know, maybe I'll do more face cam videos in the future. January was not a good month, as you guys can tell. Thank you all for watching. Long time, but not a hard time. I'll see you guys next time. Subscribe.